Now, after a short experiment, Yelp has pulled back on its daily deals offerings. Let's go to TechCrunch Disrupt back in San Francisco, where Jeremy Stoppelman, the CEO of Yelp, is standing by. Jeremy, welcome back to Bloomberg West. Before we talk about daily deals, I want to talk about another big company that's trying to go local, and that is Google. Google just bought Zagat. Obviously, Google has deep pockets in terms of its cash stockpile, which, you know, gives Zagat the opportunity to boost its traffic. How does Yelp compete with that? Yelp generates more content than any other property. And frankly, it's the only one that has a community of passionate writers that contribute just tons and tons of deep local content. Every 30 days, one million reviews have been written on Yelp. And so that's just something that nobody else can compete with. Okay, but what about the Zagat brand that, you know, has been built over the last couple of decades as well as the sales team? Where does that leave Yelp? You know, Zagat is a, a business that was started in the 70s, and it was really a way to try and create a Yelp without the Internet. Um, and so, you know, here we are in 2011 today. There's, web, there's the web, there's the internet, and so Yelp is really the answer to how do you find a local business? How do you capture word of mouth? You don't send out surveys anymore. You just have a website where a community of people can post fantastic reviews. Now, about the Daily Deals business, you guys recently pulled back. Uh, you wrote in a blog post, it hasn't been all rainbows and unicorns. We've heard consistently from certain categories of businesses that Daily Deals are uneconomic for them. Uh, new data is showing that actually using Groupon can harm merchants' Yelp ratings. Would you say that the bottom line is Daily Deals are bad for some businesses? Well, I think what you've seen is that daily deals has become really a, a commodity product. There's a number of different providers and they're all essentially selling the same thing. What we're really excited about is a product that actually lives on Yelp site. So when people are searching for a hair salon, they can actually find a, a deal right then and there for a hair salon rather than waiting for a Groupon to arrive that, that's selling them a particular salon they might not even be interested in or might not even near, be nearby. All right, let me jump in. So, uh, you know, I've done a lot of modeling of Groupon. I know that you guys have done a really extensive model and analyze the information that Groupon has as well as other information that we don't have. What did you learn about the daily deal business in your experience trying to sell a Groupon-like model? Yeah, there's a certain category or a few categories of businesses which it really works. I mean, it really works Name from three. a like hair salons, sushi, restaurants in general, those types of categories, high frequency of use. You can send those out to your email list and a lot of people buy them, but the economics don't actually work that well for the local business when they're offering 50% off. So I, I can understand why a merchant wouldn't want to say, hey, my stuff's only worth half as much as you usually pay. But from a, from, a, from a coupon issuer's standpoint, it still seems like it should be a good business. Now, Groupon, we can see from their financials, spends a ton of money trying to acquire customers. Outside of that, is there something that doesn't work in the business model? I mean, just because a lot of consumers are interested in it doesn't mean it's actually a great business because it has to be sustainable. Like these businesses are giving 50% off and then there's also a large cut to the provider, the person that said the company that's sending out the deal. So that doesn't leave a lot on the table for a, a restaurant. The restaurant's margins are razor thin. Right, already razor thin. Um, you know, uh, uh, Paul Kudrowski is on our show quite often and he had this line saying a business will be very successful if you sell a dollar for 50 cents, right. but may not, maybe not sustainable. Um, what is it that, you know, if, if you were to take that business, when you looked at it, you know, you could do what you, you guys already have a very big footprint. You've got contact with both the local merchants and advertisers that want to get near those local merchants. Can, are you trying to self-select, say, hey, we'll go after restaurants, we'll go after hair salons, and we'll leave all the other stuff, the money losing parts of the business to someone else? I mean, for the email deals business where you send out a deal via email, we're really trying to cherry pick only the best businesses and the best deals. And if we can't find those, we're not going to fill the channel because people are coming to our site anyways. This isn't how we stay in touch with consumers. We stay in touch with consumers because they're coming to us because we have the answer they're looking for. We have word of mouth online. Uh, one of the more intriguing things for me in the Groupon, I'm sorry I'm Groupon obsessed, but I'm Groupon obsessed. And you've known me long enough to know that I get I know, obsessed. I know. So uh, uh, Groupon in their filing says that uh, their customers they've acquired have an average lifespan been a four and a half years. Of course, Groupon hasn't been around four and a half years, so they're making an estimate. What do you know about the cost of acquiring a customer and how long a customer stays with you? I mean, what we've seen is that businesses like to promote on an ongoing basis. So it's not necessarily like a, they do something 
constantly. Regular, they actually like to experiment. They try different things. Sometimes business is slow. They want to augment that with some marketing, spend some money to bring in new business. And so we actually see people coming in and out of, uh, of advertising campaigns and wanting to, you know, the receptiveness to sending a deal. So really, it's a timing game. You have to get the business owner when they're looking for additional business. All right, so so uh, you and I met a couple years ago with Baron Davis and other random people. <laughs> but you guys were somewhere past this startup stage, all these people behind me. When you look at these kinds of companies, are you able to see winners from losers? You know, what I like to see is a company that looks silly on its face, but is attacking part of a, a larger problem. You know, like Airbnb, I think, is a great example. When I first heard that idea, I immediately thought, wow, this could be a replacement for hotels. Someday we could all go to this website and find a, a, an amazing flat in, in Paris downtown rather than going to the Hilton. And so an idea that starts small and sounds silly, like an Airbnb staying on, a, staying on an air mattress in someone's place, just sounds ridiculous. But you can see how over time it develops into a bigger and bigger idea. Much like, you know, Amazon, eBay, and some of the other greats before it. We'll add Yelp to that. Uh, with well, I hope so. For you, all right. <laughs> Jeremy, thanks. Let me talk to back to Emily there.